my friend, you are learning to code wrong. And here's how to fix it. So you're spending many, many hours in front of a computer, reading a book or watching a video about coding many, many hours, pouring all of your life into mastering, learning this skill called programming. Yet you're not making any progress. You're not moving forward. And even the progress that you're making, it is abysmal. It's pretty much nothing and you stuck. You're stuck in this continuous rut of tutorials, books, all these things that you can find online and you see no results. And the question is, what gives? What's going on? Why are you still in the same place? Why haven't your programming skills improved? So there's this amazing concept called the Pareto rule or the 80-20 rule. Essentially, this concept means that 80% of the results that you get come from only 20% of the effort. So meaning 80% of good results that you get, the output that you get, all of that comes from only 20% of the input, the efforts. That is amazing. It blew my mind when I learned that and I started looking at that trend in everything in my life. Now keep in mind that the 80, 20%, it doesn't mean that it has to always be 80% and 20%. It just means that the majority of the output that you get results is due to the 20%, the minority of the input. I was surprised to see that this rule actually holds in everything that governs your life, whether you're learning to play the piano, play tennis, learning a new language and so forth, which we'll talk about next. Once you understand this concept, then you will see an improvement in the way that you learn programming specifically, because that's what we're talking about here. So for example, if you want to learn the English language, you would think that you have to learn all of the words, you have to learn all of the grammar, you have to know everything in order to be able to communicate. And that is totally wrong. So I did some research. On average, the English language has about 170,000 words. Of course, it could be a little bit more, it could be less, but about there. I was very surprised to learn that to be able to communicate at a good level, I was surprised to learn that if you want to be able to communicate well in the English language, you only need to know about 2,000 to 3,000 words out of 170,000 words. That is incredible. So again, we see this Pareto rule, the 80-20 rule taking place because you don't need to know 100% of all of the words in English to be able to communicate. It would be great, but most even native speakers don't know that many words. So that tells you that these actually work. This 80-20 rule, the Pareto rule, it really works and you can see that everywhere you go. The question here is now, how can you use the Pareto rule in your favor when it comes to learning programming languages fast? Well, the answer is very simple. You have to focus on the 20% that will give you 80% of the results that you want. In programming, what that means is that if you want to learn, let's say, the Java programming language, as an example, well, you don't have to learn 100% of it. All you have to do is focus on the 20% because that is the basis, that is the fundamentals that you always need to build upon everything that will allow you to communicate, that will allow you to actually understand how the language work, how the programming language works. Obviously, we need a strategy to make this work using the 80-20 rule. Now, continuing with this example of learning Java as a programming language, the first thing you need to do is identify the core concepts. So for Java, the 20% that gets you 80% of the way to actually mastering the language, number one, you need to understand the syntax the basics of how Java code is structured. This includes data structures, the very basics, variables, arrays, and all of those basics of the language. So first you have to get comfortable with primitives like integers, uh, booleans, uh, strings, and so forth. And then you move to understanding the control structures, how to branch your programs, the if, else, while loops, all those basics of control structure. And then you go on learning the object-oriented principle because Java is definitely an object-oriented programming language, so you need to understand how that works. So you can see the steps that you need to take. All of this, and a little bit more I'm going to talk about here, is going to be part of the 20%. And of course, you need to learn about basics, input and output, 
how to print things, how to use the scanner class to get information from user. And then you go into arrays. So this is part of the data structure, arrays and collections, and understand, for instance, the difference between array lists and simple arrays and how to iterate through, remove things from an array, array list, and how all that works. Once you have those basics, you need to go to the step number two, which is dive into practical coding early. Now diving into practical coding early is very important as I talk about in this video here is because it allows you to take what you're learning and apply right away. And there's nothing else that beats that when it comes to learning how to code because you have to put things into practice. You can watch as many videos as you want, buy as many courses as you want, but if you don't put things into practice, None of this will ever work. The third step here is that you need to use documentation. Now, this is one thing that I noticed a lot of people don't talk about online is that when you are learning anything, but specifically learning a programming language, you need to start, even if you're a beginner, you need to start learning how to read the documentation. It's very important. Why? Because it's going to give you another edge when it comes to learning this programming language, which is you understand exactly how the language was constructed because the documentation will have everything. Let's say you are looking into array lists in Java, of course, and you don't understand exactly how array lists work. You've doubled, I'm not sure. Well, go to the documentation and read about it and see exactly what they talk about array lists. And that is the best thing you can do as you learn programming. And the first step is you need to understand the ecosystem. Because when it comes to developing, you realize that at some point you have to leverage what's been done. So there are a lot of tools, a lot of frameworks and so forth that you can start using to facilitate your process of building applications. And one of my favorite is practice reading code. Also, I talk about that in my video where I talk about if I could start over learning how to code, how, how I would go about doing that. Learning to read other people's code is the best skill that you could ever develop. I was actually told a long time ago when I was going to school for computer science, and I never really took um, that advice. And I wish I had taken that advice because it was, it's the best thing ever, learning to read code. Go to GitHub and just go ahead and find repos about the language you're learning. In this case, if you're learning Java. Of course, make sure that you need to embrace a community because it is with a community where you're going to grow faster. Learning by yourself, it's almost trying to climb the Mount Everest on your own. It's virtually, it's possible, but it is very painful. So find a community. By the way, speaking of community, I've started a community of like-minded people. If, if you're interested to learn more about the community I'm talking about, just check the link in the description. The other step is that as you go through, make sure you reflect on what you're doing. So have the habit of pausing and writing what you've done, what you are going through as you learn a programming language, in this case, as an example, Java. Yeah, that is very important. As you can see here, I was able to show you how to use the 80-20 rule to demystify a programming language, the steps to learning a programming language. All the things I'm talking about here is close to at least 12% to 20% of what you really need to hone in in order to be really good and learn how to program in Java as an example. Of course, you can take this framework to anything else you want to learn, but this is how I would use this framework to learn any programming language really fast. So let me know what you think and I hope you're well. I'll see you next time.